last video we actually um, solved for all those things, right? So this page is really done. Okay, so last few videos I would say. So um, now, uh, and then we also talk about how pressure gradient will affect um, our U. We say that if the pressure gradient is positive, then it may actually cause the, the flow itself to go in the opposite, opposite way, right? So it's a little okay. So, so what I mean is actually what I mean is actually if you were to have a um, I don't know, maybe be wrong, but if you are spinning this shaft okay in this direction, right? But however, if there is a a pressure, maybe air pressure, maybe it's blowing in this direction. Okay, if, so the air pressure is much greater than the velocity pressure, and therefore. You know the fluid is moving in that, in that manner. I don't know. So yeah, I'll just leave it to thinking to it. And then the next video is actually I mean this not <laughs> now we're talking about um shear stress, engine torque, power, and the volume flow rate. So what can you see from this relationship? You're trying you're actually doing applications on real real life system, okay, real world system. You determine the shear stress in order to determine the engine torque. Once you determine the engine torque, you can also you can derive an equation to describe the power. Well, which the power itself, the lower the power, the better, right? You save cost, you save energy, and then you and then the the lesser the stress, um, you you will not have any abrasion, you will not have any increase of temperature that will actually burn your system. So these are all the stuff that we are talking about, and then nonetheless the volume flow rate across the two plates. Whether is it fast or is it slow? Is it is there any um form of um retard retardation of the speed of the flow rate? I don't know. So we will look into it. So we derived the expression for the shear stress distribution of the flow. So let's take a look. So if you remember shear stress chapter one, okay, back from our uh, very long, long time ago, very long, long time ago, we have a shear stress. Okay, this is shear stress. This is the shear forces and over A. So uh, after which you also, I don't know whether they are right over here. Yeah. Also, and then the shear stress can be re can be also represented by the dynamic viscosity, um, and then partial U divided by partial Y. So the shear stress can be can be in terms of this equation. Or also this equation over here, right? So um yeah. So since we are dealing with dynamic, okay, this the the shaft is moving, is spinning. So you are most likely you can deal with the dynamic viscosity. So we are using this, <coughs> and then you can see that this takes on the same form of um what we have derived earlier from from the um earlier part. We derive our velocity u, right? So this is exactly the same equation that we are, we have, we have over here. So this is the same equation, right? So as you can see, when we derive the velo velocity of the fluid, we can easily find a lot of stuff already. So this is what um, the key key issues are, and then um, yeah. So let's get back. So we know that this is the velocity horizontal component velocity u horizontal in the x direction. So what we can do is actually to to re-represent it in terms of um trying to calculate in terms of shear stress. So we know that this is the new. What we have is the u, right? We have u over here. So if you can see, we actually need to you know partial deriv partial derivative it. So we can see um. Partial derive in terms of y, so partial u divided by partial y. So u over u y over a, you partial you differentiate y, you get u over a, right? And then plus partial p over partial x, and then u y over two nu. Okay, so so this portion over here is multiplied into these things. So therefore, you have y squared first. Right, and then you differentiate it. You you cancel away the two over here. Because if you differentiate, the two will come down. Right, 
and then you cancel away the two over here, the two over here, and then cancel, cancel. I mean, this is not two, but rather than it's two. So, so you have, you have, you cancel with the two line. You see, <coughs> in a sense. Sorry for you know partial and two is always written in a weird way. So, and then similarly, I multiply this into this, and then I differentiate y. So I only have the rest over here. So when I multiply this into a, I have like that. And then if I differentiate y, I'll just clear away the y. So this is why we have this over here. And then, um, hold on a while. Um, the next step is actually to multiply, okay, to on top of the y. Okay, you can also not multiply, but it is neater. Okay, what, what I mean is actually, um, this is 2 over here, right? This is 2. So I'm just trying to make this top over here is 2. So what I can do is actually to multiply um, 2. Because if you multiply um, 2 into the... It's just between the denominator and the numerator, that's all. So what I, what I did is actually to multiply 2 and then... I multiply 2 and then maybe... B this is 4 over 2, right? So I'm going to multiply 4 over 2 to the whole equation. Uh, what do I have? Right. Okay, no, sorry, I didn't, I should not do that. So what I did is actually just multiply 2 on, on the numerator of this portion, while I cancel away the denominator, the 2 in the denominator of this portion. So why I did that is actually, it's very simple. So as you can see, let's say, this portion over here is this portion, which is at first is without the 2 over here. Then 5 minus 10 over 2. Okay, so this 2 is in the numerator. So if you were to calculate, um, what do you have, right? So 5 minus 10 divided by 2 is 5, so you have 0. So what if I multiply 2? So we have 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. It's the same thing, you can take any, any number. Maybe you can take 10 minus 20 divided by 2 is equals to what? 10 minus 10 is 0. 20 minus 20 is equals to 0 still. So this is the, the general concept. If you want to remove whatever thing in the denominator, you just multiply the numerator with that thing, you know. So what I have is over here. Then since you know that the P, the X, and this new, they are the same as this portion over here. I can factorize them out. So what I have is over here. So the venue, right? And then the rest is 2y minus a. So this is the, what do we have? So, so far we did, we talked so much about it. Okay, so what, what are this? This is actually deriving the u. Partial u, partial y. So if you were to come back, okay, I'll just call you back. So this is just this, right? So you just multiply new with this this piece equation that we are just um um derive. You can actually have the um shear stress, okay? So mu multiplied by this. So this is the same as this. So I hope I didn't confuse you with anything. So for the next video, I'll just talk about the engine torque, okay? So the first we derive the Shear stress distribution of the flow. That is what we, we talk about it. Okay. So before I go, I just maybe I should just let you know that the next step is to find the engine torque. Okay. But nonetheless, let me explain what is the shear stress that, that that they are talking about. The shear stress is actually the stress the shear stress between the fluid. Okay. So when you when you turn the shaft, okay, let's go back to the shaft. When you spin in this direction. There will be a a a friction, a force trying to resist the, the turning. So the so this imagine this is the layer of the fluid, and then there will be a certain frictional force due to this this plate over here, right? This is why they have. This is why, um, there will be a um uneven. Velocity profile because this 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 friction over here is trying to 
prevent you know the, the spinning of the fluid itself. So there will be a shearing across this whole system. So so this is the the shaft and this is the 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 reaction force due to the the, the plate itself over here, right along the border. So the fluid is constantly under the shear stress. So um, so it's a shear stress distribution of the flow. So it's a shear distributed across the whole flow. Okay. So because it's spinning in a fluid developed, so it's always the same. So there will be a sh same shear rate. I mean shear shear stress across different. So the shear stress with this shear stress is different, right? It's trying to pull. And this is also, you know, throughout the same, okay? Not different, but rather than their, their profile are different, but then their shear stress are, the stresses in within them are the same throughout. So this is just the meaning of the shear stress itself. And then this shear stress, if you have much higher shear stress, you may actually have a higher temperature. You may actually burn, burn the shaft itself. So in the next video, I'll just talk about um, deriving the engine torque. Okay, so we're required to turn the shaft, right? Because it's just stress. Yeah, nonetheless, next video. Goodbye.